Have you ever had a work day that you just thought would never end? It just went on and on and on, and you couldn't wait to get home and just relax. Sit down and have a meal. After the meal, have a dessert. A bowl of ice cream. Briar's vanilla. <laughs> then after that, turn on the TV set. and Watch your favorite show, The Office. <laughs> Reruns of The Office. Don't want to be at The Office. Don't want to work, just want to see somebody else working. Well, in our text this morning, Paul tells us that we have a God who works all the time. And God's job is loving. And God loves working because God's job is loving. And God just can't help loving because that's the nature of God. And God can't stop. And God gives to us as children of God the invitation to love as well. We're invited into this experience of loving others as God has loved us. And yet, Sometimes this call upon us to love consistently can start getting exhausting. I was talking to this mother, and she says, my twins are always fighting. They're arguing about this and that. They just can't seem to get along. And this mother is 82 years old. Her twins are in their 60s. They have children of their own, and those children have children. And yet she's been trying to consistently love these children for many, many years, and it's just getting exhausting. You know that experience of, of just being exhausted and trying to live the Christian faith that God has called us to? We have help. Help has arrived. Our help is here. The help that we have is the Holy Spirit. And Paul tells us in our text that the Holy Spirit is always working in us and through us and around us. And the way that Paul communicates this ceaseless work of God through the Spirit of God is through this very special word that he has for us found in verse 13, where he says, You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We're sealed. I love the way that Eugene Peterson, in the message translation of the Bible, translates these words into modern vernacular. He says, through Christ, you're signed, sealed, and delivered through the Holy Spirit. Just think of it. God places a seal upon us, the seal of approval. And this imagery that Paul uses has, it's really a multiple metaphor for describing for us what God's Spirit does. It's taken from the language of the Greek and from the culture of the day when somebody would send a letter and then they would place their seal upon it. One of the images that we have of this seal is, is that through the Holy Spirit we're secure. You know if you get an envelope and the seal is not broken, it's secure. In Paul's day, a king who sent a letter would take his signet ring, and this was a very valuable ring. It was expensive, it was unique, and it was his. And this king would take that ring that never came off his finger, and he would place that ring on hot wax that was over the seal of a package or envelope or scroll. And as the seal is placed, then that package is secure. And you know, as long as that seal is not broken, 
that it's pretty safe to trust what's inside. You ever go to the drugstore and, and you go to pick up some Tylenol and you got this headache and you know you really need some help and you see a package that is already opened? Would you buy that? No. If you go to the grocery store and you see meat that has the cellophane all on top of it, but then it's been cut open. Is that the kind of meat that you want? Starting to turn a little brown inside? No. What if you get a package, a, a letter, that, that is already opened? You know, I, I remember getting a letter from a girlfriend once that my sister brought in. Look what I have for you. It was opened. It was not secure. My wife and I got a letter for our anniversary. It was a card, an anniversary card, back on May 30, 30th. That's what it was, May 30th. And it was from a lady in New Jersey. This lady always remembers our anniversary, and she always puts something else in that card. And this card that we got from her had nothing else in it, and the envelope had already been opened. And it made us kind of wonder, okay, is this really secure? Are we seeing the whole thing here? So I called her up, and this lady is kind of royalty in New Jersey. And I called her up, and I said, thank you so much for the card. She said, you're welcome. And just really appreciate everything about it. You're welcome. And the words that it said, you know, the picture was really great. Those flowers are really nice. You're welcome. And I just, I, wanted, I just wanted to ask her if she put anything in it. Not that I wanted anything, but, but because she always does, if she had written something, a check or something, I just wanted to make sure that she knew that it was compromised. And I told her, and she says, oh yeah, it was a Starbucks card. She said, I registered it. I'll go and I'll, I'll make sure that it's secure. Well, we're told in our passage of Scripture that we have been sealed and secure with the Holy Spirit. And we can be confident of this. No matter what gets into our lives, we still have the stamp of God in our life, and God loves us. God's Holy Spirit is working constantly, communicating God's love and shaping us. And we can be secure in that fact. Now, another dimension of this multiple metaphor that Paul provides for us here in the text is not only the security that is ours when we are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit, but also the blessing that is ours when we're marked by the Holy Spirit. If you are going to do some improvement on your home, or if you're gonna build a house, has anybody done a house modification or built a house? How many of you have done that? Okay. Um, did you ever do that without going to the city hall first? Well, yes, okay. I, I actually, that was a rhetorical question. It wasn't for a confession of sins. <laughs> but just in case you want to know, you can talk to that guy over there, and he'll tell you what happens when you don't get the blessing of the city. You know, when, when, when you don't get the blessing of the city, you're going to find yourself regretting what you did. And one of the things that we're told in the passage of Scripture today is that we have the blessing of the Holy Spirit. It's the seal of the Holy Spirit. When you, when you go to the city, they take the seal of the city and they stamp it on a permit and they say, you have now the blessing of the city to do the construction work that you want to do. And you can then go forward. And God gives God's construction approval and blessing for us for what the Spirit is doing in our life. I was talking to a fella at a big party. It was a party for those with ties and tails. The women were in nice formal gowns. And this gentleman I was talking with told me all about his construction business. He started out very young doing construction, then he started a construction company, then he started buying property and started building things, and he said, I have built my business with blood, sweat, and tears. I have no one to thank but myself. He literally said that. I was shocked. 
He went on to say, you know, I know these Christian types talk about the blessings of God. God blessed me here. God blessed me there. But uh, the way I look at it is God blesses those who bless themselves. And then he said, by the way, what do you do for a living? <laughs> and I told him. He says, bye, got to go. <laughs> he got out of there fast. But as I saw him walking away, I saw his coattail stuck in the back of his pants. Here this guy that didn't need any help from anyone could have used some help from somebody to help dress him when he left the bathroom. <laughs> you know, I think of this gentleman and I think of the words of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds this house, those who labor, labor in vain. We have the blessings of God. And we can be so thankful for those blessings. And we've been marked by the seal of the Holy Spirit continuing to bless us and bless us. And whether we admit it or not, we are blessed. I like to acknowledge that. Another thing that Paul wants us to acknowledge as he talks about the seal of the Holy Spirit that's on our life is that not only are we secure in God's love, not only are we blessed by God, but also we are God's possession. Think about it. The king who marked a letter said, this letter belongs to me. I'm sharing it with you, but it's mine. The king would put his seal upon the throne. The king would put his seal upon the castle. The king would put his seal upon the standards and the flags that would fly. And everybody sings, God save the king. God save the queen. Because this is the symbol of royalty that rests over us. We are the king's people. And Christ is our master and king. And I know this is hard for some people to really embrace. It's hard for people to think I am the Lord's possession, especially with the dominance of our culture that is so oftentimes me-centered. But we belong to God, Paul is telling us, and we are not our own. We're bought with a price. In Scripture, when Paul tells us that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, there were around him in Ephesus and the ancient world of the Mediterranean and in the turn of the century there, a lot of slaves who were owned and bought and purchased. And these people were marked with a tattoo that demonstrated that they were owned by another. And we as Christians have a mark too. You might notice this. When we come to church, we have this fount sitting right up front. Do you ever notice it? It's here. It's a reminder of your baptism. And you've been marked by God's love. You've been washed clean of all those marks that someone else might want to stamp you with. You know, in, in, this, in this world, there are many things that will place a claim on our lives. Things that will seek to be in charge of us. I kind of like Bob Dylan's song from way back. Remember that song? He says, you got to serve somebody. It may be the devil and it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. And you do. We do. My son, Scott, introduced to me a couple years ago this video that was put out by Wax Taylor, this guy named... Um, Oh, I forget, I forget the name of the guy. Charlie Martin, I think is his name. He sings this song, I Own You. 
And it's, it's kind of a claymation, except it's with cardboard. And it's really kind of a fun song. I own you, I own you. There's a TV set, and, and it's, it's speaking to you. It's saying, I own you, I own you. And you kind of start stomping your foot and dance a little bit. And then there's a, a car that, that drives by, and it's saying, I own you. And you just, you know, I own you, I own you. And then there's, there's um, a computer, and it, it sings to you, I own you, I own you. Well, the Bible says, I own you. They don't own you. You've been marked by my spirit. You've been baptized. You've been washed clean of all those things that want to make a claim on your life. You're mine. You're my possession. You're my dear children. And I set you free. Now, I know that there are some things that get into our lives that make a claim on us. Maybe this is maybe some addictions of food or substance of some kind. Uh, maybe it's emotions of anger, depression, frustrations, hate, bitterness, worry. But these things aren't the things that dominate us and should own us. Of course, this side of glory, we all have our issues. We all have messes in our lives. I was, I was driving by this one construction site at this little strip mall, and it had a sign out in front of it, and the sign said, please pardon the inconvenience of our mess during our beautification. And I liked that. I could put that sign right over my neck and across my chest. Please, Pardon the inconvenience of my mess as beautification is taking place. That's what the Spirit is doing. And right next to that sign is a stamp. It's a seal of God's approval. It's not my good housekeeping seal. But God is building a house. And I want to say together with Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And in the meantime, God's going to continue to do God's work. I am God's possession. I am blessed by God. I belong to God. And when I have that stamp on me, that's something that I can start tapping my feet to. That's something that makes me dance. And I, I'm so glad to be a part of a church that wants to dance together a little bit with the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Let's open ourselves once again to the Holy Spirit as we pray, shall we? Let us pray. Lord God, we are so thankful that you have breathed your breath in us at the very dawn of creation and your breath continues to breathe through your Holy Spirit. Thank you that your Spirit is creating in us the very character of Jesus and help us to continue to demonstrate that character of Jesus to all those around us. Thank you for the ways that we experience Christ's presence right here in this church. Continue to do your work through your Spirit. And thank you for this seal, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.